is working at the heart of this economic success. LAP India is a wholly owned subsidiary of LAP Group, the leading supplier of integrated solutions and branded products in the field of cable and connection technology in India. Headquartered in Stuttgart, Germany, our success story started 60 years ago with the invention of the multi-core cable of Flex by Mr. Oscar Lapp. Founded in 1957, Lapp has remained a family-owned company and has grown to become a global player with over 3,700 employees operating in 152 countries across the world. Realising the potential of the Indian market, the LAP Group set up a manufacturing facility in Bangalore in 1998. In Bangalore, we manufacture highly engineered cables to meet the increasingly complex requirements of the growing Indian market. In 2012, we inaugurated our second manufacturing facility in Bhopal, producing single-core wires for India's fast-expanding building sector. Now, the Bhopal factory also produces multi-core cables, cutting down delivery lead time to meet customer needs. Today, LAP India is the largest operation outside of Germany, manufacturing 200,000 kilometers of cable in 2018. It's length enough to surround the Earth five times. We are the first cable manufacturer in India to implement advanced planning optimization. The automatic sequencing of production ensures on-time delivery, predictable and reliable. Our customers are important to us and so is the environment. As part of our commitment of caring for and protecting the environment, both our plants are ROHS certified. Our innovations define the industry standards. LAP is a one-stop solution provider for all your electrotechnical requirements. We have over 40,000 products. Our eight strong brands are Urflex, Unitronic, Etherline, Hytronic, Epic, Skintop, Sylvine, and Fleximark. In our fully-fledged innovation and engineering center and state-of-the-art laboratory, we design, develop, manufacture, and test products made in India for India. As a cable and technology expert, we established centers of excellence at reputed engineering institutes across India to promote innovation and encourage young minds towards research and development. To add value to our customers, we also offer Earthlex Connect, the customized cable assembly solutions, ranging from cables or custom servo assemblies to complex drag chain applications. Closer is better. We aim for proximity to markets and customers. Thanks to our multiple fulfillment centers, service points with Earthlex Connect, and a strong network of channel partners, our products are there where you need them. Our 24-7 online shopping portal makes ordering even easier at the click of a button. India's growth is fueled by key industry segments. LAP products are globally certified and approved to meet the industry requirements. Trusted by India's leading organizations, LAP is the cable and connection technology supplier of choice and reliable partner for the future. In 2018, we are serving over 7,000 customers with a track record of double-digit annual growth. That is why we keep investing in our manufacturing facilities at Bangalore and Bhopal. Thanks to the trust and collaboration of our customers, partners, employees and stakeholders, we are helping to contribute to the country's sustainable growth, laying the foundation for a better tomorrow. Together, reliably connecting India and the world. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Zuili Eklore, and I am from Publish Industry India Private Limited. 
Publish Industry India is a 100% subsidiary of Publish Industry World like GmbH Germany that publishes the trade magazines AND India, Automation and Digitization, and EM, which is Efficient Manufacturing. I will be your host for today's webinar, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to the webinar on Industrial Communication, Enabling Technology for Smart Factories. Also, I'm very excited to tell all of you that for those who stayed at the end till the end of the webinar today, they will qualify for a lucky draw where three winners will be picked and will win a lab branded digital clock. So at the core of the smart factory is the merging of physical and digital worlds alongside the emergence of a vast and rapidly expanding network of smart machines in which every digital device has the potential to serve as a point for interconnection and information exchange. All of these are made possible largely by hand-wired cable connections that are capable of transmitting zillions of bytes of data. So this offers enormous opportunities, but also use challenges for the industrial and manufacturing sectors. When it comes to cabling and connection technology, demands are already changing, data rates are climbing, and network cables aren't just connecting machinery, but are laid with intelligence sens uh, sensors, millions and millions of them. So today's webinar on industrial communication, enabling technology for smart factories, will discuss the need of availability of data for smart factories and industry 4.0, how industrial communication IC technologies have changed during the past decades and how today IC needs to integrate IT and OT, which is operation technology networks. Today, we'll also discuss how industrial ethernet is replacing field buses and more and more, and being the standard in factories today, how physical network components like cables, connectors, and Ethernet switches are coming more in focus with the introduction of industrial Ethernet, and a lot more to discuss. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin today's webinar, I would like to give out a few instructions to our presenters so that the web webinar can function smoothly without any hindrances. First of all, I'd like to request that to check your internet connection if it is stable or not. It's best if you're using wired LAN connection. For a smoother connection with no issues, you can make sure that the other tabs on your computer or your mobile phone are closed. Also, please check that your web cameras are, 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 uh, are closed and, and if you're facing the light, so that our attendees will view you properly. So that if, there's, if you're facing the light, you will be visible clearly. At the end of each presentation, we'll be open to Q&As. So if the audience, if you look at the bottom, there's a Q&A. Uh, icon over there. So just click there and just put in your questions for our presenters and we will have them answered. So I would also request the presenters to please wrap up your addresses two to three minutes before your allotted time so that we will have time for the Q&A. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me first take you through today's agenda. Uh, our webinar will begin with a technology presentation by Mr. Ralph Mobis, who is the head of product management industrial communication at Lab GmbH, along with some poll questions for the audience to participate in. Uh, this will be followed by a presentation by Mr. Nitin Kalotia, advisor Kaizen Hansai LLP and partner Patona Advisory. So let's start. So we will be starting our first poll today uh, for today's webinar. So can we have the poll on our screen, please? Can we have the poll on screen? Yes. So the poll says that, are you aware of industrial communication offering from lab? Your options are yes or no. So please vote, you have, you have uh, 20 seconds to vote. All right, can we have the results? Yes, so uh, no is the vote that's gone, that 74% is no, that they are uh, not aware of industrial communication offering from lab, but yes, 26% of the people are aware. So I'm sure after this webinar, the remaining 74% will be aware of it now. So, um, so yes, we would. I would like to start by for inviting Mr. Ralph Mobis, who head of product management, industrial communication lab, GmbH, who will be giving us a technology presentation on industrial communication, enabling technology for smart factories. Mr. Ralph has been associated with lab for the past eight years as head of the product management for industrial communication systems. He has studied at the University of Applied Sciences in Esslingen, Germany, and has a master degree in industrial engineering. 
He has over 20 years of long experience as product manager for industrial automation and communication systems at different companies. He's also an expert for industrial automation systems for industry 4.0 and industrial Ethernet, industrial Internet of Things, IIoT. So, Mr. Ralph, over to you. So thank you very much, Judy, for the introduction. Thank you. So first of all, uh, a warm welcome from my side. I'm sitting here in uh, Stuttgart, uh, Germany at the LAP headquarter. And um, I'm Ralf Möbus, as Judy already introduced me. And first of all, thank you uh, for joining us today. And um, I want to provide you a hopefully very interesting uh, webinar on industrial communication as an enabling technology for smart factories. And um, so I want to share my screen now that you can see my presentation. Just one second. So here it is. So yes, what we want to do today, I want to give you an insight about trends in industrial communication. And uh, I also want to show you what this means for us as, as LAP and also maybe what it means for you as a, as a user of um, such technologies. So industrial Ethernet is a topic which is uh, very important at the moment to know about when we talk about uh, industrial communication. We will dive into this. Um, TSN is, some, is a new technology that is coming up. Time sensitive, sensitive network is something that we talk about um, when we talk about real time communication. So this is getting more and more important in the future. Um, OPC UA, uh, real open technology uh, for industrial communication. We will also scratch this a little bit. And uh, predictive maintenance as a solution uh, to reach um, zero downtime in the factory is also something that we want to talk about. Security, a measure which is very important uh, to protect your assets and at the end also the productivity of, uh, of your factory. Data rates are increasing. That means also installation effort has increased uh, during the last years. And I want to show you some solutions um, how we can um, lower the installation effort for um, industrial installations. Single pair Ethernet is one of these solutions uh, that is coming up at the moment. Uh, and we also want to talk about this. So we had the introduction of the lab group already in the beginning. So um, I want to rush through this uh, very quick. Um, so this, what you can see here are our eight brands. And as you have seen in the video at the beginning, the idea of the company founder of LAP was to develop and um, sell control cables. Yeah, And therefore, our brand Ölflex is a very uh, well-known and famous brand for industrial um, power and um, yeah, mainly power and control cables. So that means at LAP, everything started with the cables. And um, therefore, we are for sure also providing very high quality and very a very broad portfolio also for data cables. And um, then we come to our brand for data cables, Ethernet systems, uh, which is called Etherline. Um, I want to show you later some solutions from Etherline also. But under the brand Ethernet, uh, or under the brand Etherline, we also have a lot of uh, solutions that's not just uh, cables, that's just uh, one part of the network. Um, we have also connectors, patch cords, and um, industrial Ethernet switches. At the end, everything that you need uh, to build up your industrial Ethernet network in the factory. Another brand uh, that is important if you talk about uh, industrial communication, um, is our brand Unitronic. Um, this is our brand for field bus systems. You know, field buses are the old, somehow old communication technology, but that is uh, very 
often still used in the factory. And um, there also we have a very broad portfolio of uh, um, installation of field bus systems. And then last but not least, um, Hydronic, which is our brand for fiber optic uh, cabling systems. That means cables, connectors, patch cords, and also uh, some switches um, that we are offering for this uh, to build up a complete fiber optic network. And this all together gives um, us the opportunity to really uh, provide complete industrial communication solutions to our customers. So now diving in a little bit in, in trends, what we see at the moment uh, on a global scale on the market. IoT, Internet of Things, we can call this in name, many names, you know it, um, we can call it also Smart Factory, we can call it also Industry 4.0, the fourth industrial revolution. But they have, all of them have something in common, and this is the communication. Without communication, factory will not be smart and uh, we don't get the data out of the factory that we need to analyze and uh, process in other places. So that means communication is the key for everything. And uh, this slide here is very impressive from the numbers. Um, in 2006, we had a, a break even. That it was the first time when we had more network devices than people in the world. In 2020, it was already six times, more than six times uh, network devices than people in the world. So that's what I think is very impressive and that accounts into 50, 50 billions of network devices on a global basis. Yeah? So that you can see this is really a trend that is happening at the moment. And for sure, there are also many consumer um, technologies um, that we have here smartphones laptops or smart tvs all the things yeah that we have already and uh but for the future it is expected um that this trend will be mainly driven by industrial applications so this has let's say um is still in the beginning that we have all everywhere smart devices in the factory and that, that we have everything networked in the factory so let's have a little bit closer look to, to the Indian market. I have uh, a, a small um, market study here, um, which is um, on industrial IoT. And it's saying that uh, in Indian, the market size of IoT in general is 9 billion US dollars at the moment. And um, the share of industrial IoT is 4.95 billion. So, and if you look now and in, in, in detail in the shares um, that we are talking about here, then for example, manufacturing has a share of 18% here from that uh, total market of IoT. That means that is already uh, a huge market and for sure this is expected uh, to accelerate and grow much more in future. So now let's dive a little bit deeper and look at the major trends in industrial communication that we are seeing at the moment. So seamless communication is one point. Without a seamless network where I can access the data at every time, at every point, um, we will not have really um, industry 4.0 or smart factory. That means we need standards that um, the communication is always um, let's say compatible and uh, the different applications and devices understand each other without needing any gateways or translators in the fact in the um, in the network and one solution for this an important solution uh, and standard that is coming up here is opc ua for example i come later back to this and tsn for time sensitive network a new real-time communication standard and also for sure, it is needed um, to have everything IP based. What does that mean? We have Ethernet technology, we have Wi-Fi, or we have also a new technology like single pair Ethernet. Also coming back to this later. Zero downtime. How can we um, how can we reach this? For sure, it is clear um, if our network in the factory is down, 
we will we cannot produce anymore yeah if everything is let's say running on the network basis yeah so that means we need a really reliable network and there are some measures that can be used um and that we are also offering um that can um help to reach this target of zero downtime network redundancy is one of these network diagnostics once a failure is happened i want to find the failure quick in the network reliable industrial physical network components for sure you need to use real industrial grade cables connectors and all that physical components they need to be industrial grade and they always need to fit to the certain application yeah if you use it a cable in a drag chain then it needs to be suitable for drag chains and tested for drag chain if you use it in a robot it needs to be suitable for this if you use this, use this in a food and beverage plant, then also it needs to be robust against maybe temperature or um, chemical stress or whatever. Yeah. Then solutions like predictive maintenance are coming up. So we want to avoid a failure before it happens. That means we, we need solutions that take, give us the opportunity to detect a failure before maybe a cable breaks or a, another component of the network is breaking. Oh, sorry. Um, security. Nothing is, uh, let's say, or let's say for maybe for the guys in the factory, uh, security is something that is quite new because uh, these are usually um, automation guides. But now, since the factory is now connected also to the internet and the cloud and all that systems that are outside the company, and uh, we want to have access to the factory and the data of the in the factory, then security is something that is really mandatory. Without security, we are coming into risks that um, hackers come in and um, uh, uh, maybe um, uh, risking our productivity because they cause a network downtime or they can steal data out of the factory um, that we want uh, that's our secure data that we want to protect yeah so that means we always need to take care that we have the awareness and the know-how on production level about security threats and also the people in the factory need to know about that components about also about IT um, protocols and all that things uh, that they can set up security measures in the factory. Industrial Internet of Things already said it's a really trend that's happening at the moment, but what does it mean on the on the plant floor? Um, so we will see much more smart devices in future like sensors for example with integrated intelligence so this is driven by decreasing prices in electronics in chips and uh, processors and computers and all that things yeah that means we are now able to integrate intelligence and connectivity communication in every device in the in the factory and even to Smart, uh, very low cost sensors and uh, then get this data out of these components. This is what is IoT at the end, industrial IoT is about, yeah, that in every small device we have um, intelligence and communication integrated. This means also massive data, much more data is coming uh, since every sensor is providing um, his the information to the network, then we will have much higher bandwidth need in the backbones of the factory, and we need to process this data. Downsizing is something that's happening. Single pair Ethernet is a new trend that's coming up, um, which makes it um, very low cost to integrate a component like a sensor in the in the network in the Ethernet. Network. So this is also somehow a technology which is competing against Wi-Fi, for example, because, you know, very, very low cost IoT devices are today often also um, connected via Wi-Fi. 
But um, we don't see this as the general solution in the factory. It will be there in some places for sure. And it makes sense, for example, for equipment that is moving like driverless transfer systems and such things. But we don't see it for um, stationary installed equipment. There the, we see still the cable in the factory is the most reliable solution. And therefore, single pay Ethernet is a very competitive uh, solution, which I will also explain later in the presentation. So, why do we only talk about industrial Ethernet at the moment? So, industrial Ethernet is uh, a trend uh, that's coming in the factories, and it's the basis at the end to have a real uh, seamless industrial communication system you know today in the factories we have a lot of technologies that are incompatible to each other a lot of field bus systems and special communication systems and this is not possible to reach seamless communication with this yeah and industrial ethernet is also bringing some many additional be benefits with it um, compared to the old field bus system increased network size we can build much bigger networks with this more devices and higher data rates we have more flexible topologies and expandabilities you know with switches you can build star topologies ring topologies line topologies everything um, that makes it very flexible to adapt the layout of your network to the blend structure one network for mixed services. We have lots of bandwidth and we have also standardized communication that gives us the opportunity to maybe transmit um, control data on the same cable with video data um, over one network. ERP and cloud connectivity without gateways. We don't need translators uh, to um, integrate different technologies because we are using only one technology. So we can reduce all these uh, translating devices in the network. Benefit from IT in innovations. You know how, how fast um, IT innovations are developing smartphones, computers, uh, or also wireless uh, Wi Fi technologies. 5G is coming up at the moment as a new mobile communication standards. And we can we make this Ethernet also this technology usable in the factory. Industrial communication. Why do we differentiate in industrial communication and uh, normal uh, communication in the offices, for example? Since industrial communication has, um, or because industrial communication has some specific requirements like real time requirements or also robustness of the devices, different network structures, uh, everything different uh, to the that what we have in the office environment. And um, therefore, many industrial communication systems have been developed in the past. Um, today, we have still many field buses in use, but uh, the change is uh, already full in fully in process and um, we have already reached uh, let's say a bigger share of industrial ethernet uh, than for field buses yeah uh, also we at lab see this trend uh, we are already uh, selling much more industrial ethernet cables and connectors than field bus systems but there's still a big a huge installed basis of uh, good old field buses and also we support uh, this old somehow old communication systems so we see us as lab uh, in the in, um, communication system neutral which means we do support all of these communication systems so we are not focusing on one single uh, communication system for sure there are um, some are more important on the market and some are less. For example, Ethernet IP and Profinet are the biggest one. If it, if you're talking about Europe and the US, if you are talking about the Asian market, um, then for instance, uh, CC Link IE is also an important standard, uh, which is coming from Mitsubishi, for example. Profinet is coming from Siemens originally. Ethernet IP is coming from Rockwell. So you, so you see. Um, all the developments are coming somehow from control control system manufacturers. So, but what you also see, um, there are still 
a lot of protocols on the market um, which is maybe not the best solution if we are talking about that requirement of seamless communication. That means there are still um, many systems which at mi minimum on the protocol side are incompatible to each other. You cannot integrate an Ethernet IP remote IO, for example, in a Profinet network. You need a gateway for this. So at this point, I want to uh, take the opportunity and also uh, hand over to, to Julie to do our second poll, which is on uh, which industrial Ethernet system are you using? Julie, can yes. you start the poll? Yes, Mr. Ralf, can we have the poll on screen, please? Yes, so the poll asks you that uh, which protocol do you use uh, in your automation network? This is a multiple choice question, so you can take uh, as many options as you want. So your options are Profibus, Profinet, CC Link, CC Link I, or Modebus. So your time starts now. All right, so can we have the results for the poll? Yes, so there's a tie between Profibus and Profinet, which is 48, 48%. And then the next vote goes to Modebus, which is 45%. And then it's a CC Link IE, which is 23%. And then that's followed by CC Link, which is 20%. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for voting. Uh, Mr. Ralph, over to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Julie, and also thank you very much for uh, doing the poll. And um, so, yes, um, it, it is, let's say, the picture that we also have on the market, yeah, um, somehow. So that means Profibus and Profinet is uh, for sure mo uh, most important uh, for industrial communication and also protocol like Modbus, which we don't have on this slide, is um, important. Um, uh, since uh, it is also a communication system that is uh, often used in um, for industrial control systems and uh, which is somehow a little bit more man control system manufacturer neutral. Yeah? Uh, CC Link IE, uh, also somehow I expected this because um, I think India is also a little bit influenced from the from the Asian or is influenced by the Asian market and uh, CC Link IE is uh, something that is also supported from uh, Mitsubishi as a control system manufacturer. And so we are part of all these uh, three member organizations uh, of that uh, of Profinet, Ethernet IP, and CC Link IE. So we are working actively also in the standardization of this uh, system. And this enables us also to have always the latest uh, developments on this. Um, communication systems available. So automation pyramid, I think many of you already have seen such a, a similar picture, which means, um, or it is somehow built up like this. We have the sensor actuator level, the control level, and the so-called ERP MAS uh, level, the enterprise resource planning level, which is somehow in the office environment. And this here is in the uh, lowest factory level or is in the field level in the factory, the sensors and actuator. So um, as I said, there are still uh, there are still many technologies are in use communication protocols that are not compatible to each other. Yeah, we have Profinet, Profibus on the control level. We have AS interface, for example, also a communication technology on the lowest field level or I/O link, and uh, somehow they there have been workarounds to integrate these um, technologies together in the past there are gateways or that uh, are devices that have gateway functionality integrated uh, to may enable a communication between these layers yeah but um it is still 
expensive and high effort and uh, there's still not every data available on on the next layer yeah it means always i have to program something if i want to have the data out of this plc for example from this sensor below here then i need to program in the plc that the erp data, data uh, system gets this certain data yeah so, and this is what we see, what is changing in the future. Um, first of all, we see that somehow uh, the pyramid is maybe changing in the importance of the different layers. So that means maybe the control level is getting less important in the future because we have more decentralized intelligence. That means we will see in future more smart devices like sensors or motors and drives which have already integrated um, intelligence and have maybe also integrated already some parts of the um, intelligence from the control level. Yeah, that means also uh, they can communicate on their own. Uh, a sensor, for example, that will be integrated in the Ethernet network. And if the ERP system is interested in the data, maybe a temperature value uh, or maybe a, a value from an RFID reader out of the factory, which is telling the ERP system that the good is ready produced. Yeah, then I don't need to, to ask the PLC in future anymore to get the data to the ERP system. No, the ERP system can directly ask the sensor for the data. Yeah, that means uh, we have much more multiple. Uh, communication relationships and direct communication relationships and uh, so this gives us then also the opportunity to have the data everywhere available and to access the data very easily yeah so i already introduced at the beginning opc ua as an enabling technology uh, for seamless communication. OPC OA is a, a get more and more important standard which has uh, rapidly grown in the in the uh, past years. And um, so where does it come from? First, we have OPC OA, I think at minimum since uh, maybe 15, maybe 20 years uh, already available. And uh, but at first it was used for connection between um, machine, uh, a machine and the ERP system, for example, yeah. But now, developed it developed further, and with new developments like uh, PubSub, publish sub subscribe, we can also use OPC UA on the lower level on the plant floor, where we use, for instance, um, Profinet today, yeah. That means that gives us also the opportunity to have real-time communication between controllers and sensors or controllers and uh, actuators or between controllers from PLC to PLC. Yeah? And OPC OA is today a broadly available standard which uh, you can buy uh, in every, mainly every PLC on the market. If you buy a PLC from Siemens or from Rockwell or whoever, then you get them also with an integrated U your OPC UA uh, protocol. Mostly they have integrated both protocols. Uh, they have the pro protocol that's coming from the PLC manufacturer like Profinet, but they have also integrated OPC UA. So, and the, the very good thing with UPA, your OPC UA is that it is manufacturer neutral and a standardized protocol. That means you can use this also to com uh, communicate between devices from different manufacturers, from a PLC from Siemens, for example, to a PLC from Rockwell, because uh, this is now really an open standard and you don't need any uh, integration layers like gateways or something that does that do some translating. Yeah. It also provides very high level of security. End-to-end -end encryption comes with this. And as I said, it's supported by many industrial device manufacturers. So what's looking a little bit in the history of uh, real-time communication, um, you know, Profibus 
was already capable to do real-time communication or device network can open. But with the um, market introduction of Profinet or Ethernet IP, this changed because Ethernet uh, per se is not uh, real-time capable. You have many devices like switches and so on, uh, active components that cause a delay to the communication. And therefore it is uh, difficult to reach without any protocol enhancement or real-time communication in, with, with Ethernet. So this protocol enhancement has been done by the uh, protocol um, developers for Profinet. It's called Profinet IRT, which requires special uh, um, proprietary switches with a proprietary technology inside or for Ethernet IP or CIP sync. So then we all right, then we found out, okay, this is not what we need for seamless communication, because as you can imagine, these technologies are still incompatible to each other. Yeah, that means in the same network, then you have maybe Profinet IRT as an island uh, technology, and then you have Ethernet IP uh, as another technology, which are not compatible, which require specific network components uh, for to reach this. So um, this was the, the idea to launch uh, a new technology under the IEEE standard row or series, uh, which is called TSN, Time Sensitive Network, which is a really standardized uh, real-time protocol. So TSN, the turbo for industrial communication. Um, how does it look like? Maybe some of you are, have already seen um, that seven layer model uh, for communication systems, so called, so called OSI reference model, which allows us to uh, structureize um, communication. And uh, there you have such things that you maybe know, TCP IP, UDP, and on top of this, we have, uh, for instance, Profinet and Ethernet IP and all these uh, industrial protocol uh, definitions. And um, there you can see where TSN will be implemented. It will be implemented on the so-called data link layer, which means uh, all these protocols that are above here can be used uh, on basis with TSN and uh, are still, yeah, yeah, they are still usable. Uh, but what it means, if it is implemented on the data link layer, it needs to be implemented in each physical component. That means uh, we have switches that need to be have TSN integrated. And we have also the devices, the network subscribers like uh, uh, PLCs or remote IOs or sensors or whatever that uh, need to have IRT in uh, TSN integrated if they want to communicate in real time via TSN. So that means also we see a lot of new components that are coming up in future like switches and active network components that will be TSN, uh, will have TSN function available. I don't want to dive too deep in TSN, how it works and all that things, but um, what does it offer? It offers functions for quality of service, for instance, uh, bandwidth reservation. Uh, it also offers synchronization between different network devices. It offers very low la latency times, um, which is also important for to reach short cycle times and uh, real-time communication. And at the end, also uh, seamless redundancy is possible. What does that mean? Uh, you can build up a redundant network without any um, delay time uh, if the redundancy is required. For example, if a cable breaks, um, then it, the, the redundancy will be available or the network will be available again without any interruption in the communication, which will also uh, result in no standstill in your application. Security, urgent need for action. So security for sure is one important uh, measure that we need uh, in the factories um, to avoid that 
intruders like hackers come in our factory and maybe shut the plant down uh, or do sabotage or also um, do a manipulation of, of data or application software. So this can be very dangerous. Uh, if you look, for example, at a nu nuclear power station, if uh, there's some manipulation from outside will happen, uh, I think you can imagine how dangerous this is. But also in a, a production, you don't want to have manipulation because this avoids that you can produce. And at the end, uh, you have uh, downtimes, which cost a lot of money. And it could happen that someone breaks in in the network if it is not protected and still intellectual property like re recipes. Uh, if you produce Coca-Cola or something like this, you don't want to use, uh, want to, uh, that someone steals your recipes about this, yeah. So how can we reach um, uh, that uh, security measures? Um, one example is uh, what you see here, which is also um, realized with a device from us, our NAT router, which allows for stru structuring the network. Um, a router is working on the IP address basis. That means you can separate um, a machine from the rest of the network and limit the access to that machine. Yeah? Um, also, this small device, it's, which is made for installing it in a cabinet of a machine, has a firewall integrated. That means you can also limit um, different protocols that you don't need in the machine. And therefore, these protocols very often have a, let's, or let's say every protocol that is used uh, has a certain risk uh, that someone can uh, enter your network uh, who is not allowed to. That means we block, want to block every protocol that is not really needed uh, in the machine. This can be done with the integrated firewall. We can also limit the access uh, to certain MAC addresses. We can say, okay, um, or certain MAC addresses and IP addresses. That means we can say uh, who should have access uh, to the network, which computer is allowed to access this, which person maybe is allowed to access the network, and who not. Yeah, that means we can do black and white listing um, to avoid that or to allow just just certain people to enter uh, to the machine. So very small device uh, which solves many uh, security problems um, in the machine. Solutions uh, for, for the factory. Um, that what I, I already said, this industrial NAT firewall is uh, one uh, great solution uh, to make easy, um, uh, to integrate very easy uh, security concept on the, on the plant level or in the, on the machine level. And also it is very easy to set up so it can be used also by non-IT professionals like automation uh, specialists. And also we recommend always to use managed industrial Ethernet switches. So because they also allow for structuring the network, what for example unmanaged switches do not allow. So they have certain intelligence and setup functionality inside where we can limit access on the switch level. So now let's go a little bit back from the from all that protocol and active components parts uh, to the physical level. That means um, physical components like cables and connectors. So. In the past, uh, the data rates um, always increased in the factories. Um, that means, uh, as I said in the beginning, much more data is communicated today. Factories are getting smarter. And uh, so always the data rates also increasing. Um, so this requires also more complex cables and uh, causes us a higher installation effort. For example, for 100 megabit CAT5, uh, two or four pairs was enough. For gigabit and CAT6A, we need always four pairs of copper in the cable. So four pairs need to be installed in field maybe, if you need to install eight cores in a uh, RG45 
five connectors. You know what I'm talking about. So this is very often high effort and you can make a lot of mistakes. So this is the reason why a new technology is coming up now, which is called single pair Ethernet. This is uh, what we call downsizing. That means now it is possible with a new physical layer uh, to install industrial Ethernet with only two cores for up to one gigabit uh, data rate. We are developing solutions um, for making us making it easy for you to install on, on the plant level and the factory level. Um, that means this is uh, one solution from us, our fast connect solution. Um, that means we have developed a special cable portfolio with a special construction, which allows us to use such a tool here and uh, enable us to install a fast connect IDC connector, insulation displacement connector very quick. That means that all results in a reduction of assembly time by 30%. And um, it goes very easy to just take this tool, turn it around the cable, and then the outer sheet and uh, um, the shielding of the, of the cable is cut in one step. Yeah. And then you directly can insert it in the connector. One single pair for up to 10 gigabit Ethernet. This is single pair Ethernet, uh, the new solution that is coming up at the moment. Single pair Ethernet uh, belongs or um, is built up on, um, on different standards, different IEEE standards, which are already released and gives us the opportunity um, to do, for example, one uh, or 10 megabit communication with a standard which is called um, a IEEE and 802.3 CG via 1000 meter, which is quite a lot. And uh, for 10 megabit, uh, I think this is really a very good performance. So this is something 10 megabit for sure is not gigabit, but it is suitable for sensors, for example, because they don't need gigabit in it in the uh, normally. Then another IEEE standard describes 100 megabit uh, for up to 40 meters with shielded cables and then also one gigabit is possible for up to up to 40 meter and there's even a, a multi-gig standard for up to 10 gigabit via 50 meter which we don't see so much in the factory but uh, it could be maybe also an interesting solution um, in a cabinet where you have maybe some uh, devices that have high de data rates yeah so but in all these four standards um, are very interesting standards where we, uh, where we see really the uh, big chance that we have a um, installation standard, a new installation standards in future in the factories um, with a very low effort because only two cores are very quick to install. The cables are uh, thinner, don't need so much space and uh, also, they are very robust, for example, if it comes to movement yeah, in a drag chain or in a robot where you always move the cable, two cores are very robust and uh, do not break so fast. So single pair Ethernet is that missing link. Uh, if you look at that automation pyramid here, then on the lowest field level, we still have some uh, proprietary technologies uh, like IO-Link, AS interface, or all, all that things that are used today there. And single pay Ethernet now is a very economic solution to um, get access to this lowest field level with Ethernet. Where are the typical applications for a single pay Ethernet? They, you can see them here in this um, build uh, or in this picture. Uh, about a complete factory network. It can be used for connecting to sensors, can be used for connecting to drives, uh, or it also can be used, for example, for, for a PLC communication in the, in the cabinet. Yeah. So a lot of nice applications, uh, very sing, uh, single pay Ethernet is real uh, beneficial um, to integrate the network further with Ethernet. Our first products that we are offering for single pay Ethernet, we have a 
cable for uh, cable chain installation uh, for up to one gigabit uh, per second. We have one for occasional flexing, that means uh, sometimes moved. That's typically on a uh, on a on a cable track on a or on a um, yeah or or in a cabinet. So that can be used uh, for up to 100 meter with 100 megabit or up to 40 meter with one gigabit per second. And then we have a very thick cable, the AWG 18 cable, which is usable for 10 megabit per second and up to 1000 meter. We have a lot of new uh, single pay Ethernet cables in the development because this technology is developing very fast at the moment. And um, so with every new application, um, we see there are new requirements for cables. So um, that means at the moment, this is just a starting portfolio that we are offering and uh, will come up much more new solutions. Also connectors are in work and will be available soon. Measures to reach zero downtime in the network. Um, some things we already said, use network redundancy. Um, so if we have managed switches, we always have the redundancy fun functionality integrated in our uh, managed switches. That means if, the, if a cable breaks, then we have a redundancy function that keeps the network up and running. Predictive maintenance, is a solution that we have developed to avoid standstill caused by cable breaks. For instance, if you have a drag chain and the cable is always moved or you have a robot, then uh, it's just a matter of the time once the cable will breaks. Even if you have a very um, robust and high quality cable, for sure, which we are offering, um, it could happen that the cable breaks and then you have a, a standstill in the factory. And this is what we want to avoid with uh, predictive, our predictive maintenance solution. That means we have developed a small intelligent box that uh, can simply be integrated in the cable and uh, is measuring the cable transmission performance. And so we always have, an, uh, have a very precise insight of the transmission characteristics of the cable and uh, see if the, it's getting worse. Yeah. Reliable industrial physical network components. Sure, this is the basis for every industrial installation. You need cables that are suitable for the certain environment, for the applications. And this is the reason why we are offering so many types of cables uh, at the end to have for every application uh, the suitable solution available. So we are offering for sure not just the cable, we are offering also the uh, patch cords um, with overmolded connectors ready installed and tested so you can make no failure during the installation. So network diagnosis. Um, once a failure is happen happening, then you want to have find the failure very quick Yeah, that you can fix it. So the key to this is to use managed switches. Today, there are still many unmanaged switches that we find in the factories, but uh, to reach zero downtime, managed, managed switches are mandatory because they are offering functions like SNMP, for example, where you can integrate uh, diagnostics in your uh, supervising system or web interface, that means you can directly access the uh, switch via web browser and do detailed di diagnosis on port level, for example. You can see if a cable is broken or is detached um, from, the, from the switch, or uh, if you have some uh, packet failures uh, that are happening when a, when a channel is bad. Yeah. So manage switches is uh, really also a key for uh, zero downtime. So our solution for predictive maintenance, I don't want to go too deep in detail. The name is uh, Isoline Guard. It is a solution that we have developed um, to, um, especially in applications where you have a lot of wear and tear of the cable. Um, for instance, for moved cables, drag chains, robots, uh, everywhere where you have a high risk that the cable is damaged, um, there we have now a solution that we can monitor data cables 
uh, during the application is in running. This is one solution that we have developed as a very, uh, or one example of a solution that we have developed um, for uh, reliable communication, in this case uh, for robots. That's our new Profinet Type R. It's a cable that we have um, tested um, with every, um, afford, every stress that you can imagine that um, can happen in the installation on a robot. So it's tested for torsion, it's tested for bending, uh, that means uh, more this movement, and it's tested for uh, also a new test that's called TikTok, that means we make always this movement on the cable. And um, so this is now according to a new test standard, uh, which is called Type R, which was uh, developed by the, with, together with us, with the Profinet uh, user organization, um, to have a real standard from mechanical properties of a um, Ethernet cable, of a Profinet cable in for using it in a robot. So coming to the end, um, so hopefully we have enough time uh, to for Q and A's. Um, just a quick overview here about the solutions that you can get from lab for industrial communication. Um, we have uh, connectors are, are, first of all, a very broad portfolio of Ethernet industrial Ethernet cables, which are developed and produced in our factory CERM in Italy. Um, so Ethernet access industrial Ethernet switches. This is also when you have the cable, when you have the connector, you also need the switches to build up the complete network. So also a broad range of very um, robust industrial Ethernet switches. The NAT router is uh, one of our security solutions that we are offering that you can use directly in the machine. Also another um, very nice solution uh, for security, our secured gateways, um, which we do together with TosiBox which uh, allows for remote maintenance of a machine. That means to, we offer you a secure access from outside the factory to the machine inside the factory. Hydronic optical fiber cables and also optical accessories. Um, that means also complete optical installation um, systems is something that we can offer. So, this is the complete industrial communication offering. And uh, I skipped the conclusion here because I think we are a little ahead of time. So I want to give more the opportunity now uh, for Julie to do the last poll and also for the Q&As um, that you bring up to us. Julie, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Ralph. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now have uh, the last poll for you all. Uh, should lab get in touch with you for further discussion on industrial communication? You have your options, yes or no? Please vote. Can we have the results for the poll? Wow, so 60% are saying that, yes, uh, lab should get in touch with you for further discussion industrial communication. So we would be, uh, so that's a very good result, I would say. Uh, so now, uh, Mr. Ralph, thank you very much for your presentation. It was, uh, it was a very precise look at the Indian market uh, in IoT and also what makes uh, security mandatory and how it's an important factor to ensure productivity. And also you gave us some very interesting solutions from labs. So thank you very much for all of that. Now I would like to hand over to Mr. Shekhar Jitkar, uh, who is the chief editor at Publish Industry India Private Limited, who will be taking the Q&As from the audience that if they have any questions for Mr. Ralph. Mr. Jitkar, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Zuli. Hello, Ralph. Hello, Shekhar. Hello. Yes, it was interesting to hear your presentation. Uh, it was quite insightful and comprehensive. You provided uh, each and every small detail in your presentation. So uh, I don't think there, there will be any questions to be asked, but there are still a few questions. Uh, first question is from Kaustub Sinha. 
uh, how it is different from normal uh, uh, CATC CAT6 or fiber cabling of your solution while integrating data voice and video? Uh, could you please repeat because I would, uh, and, and, and speak slow because the audio is a little bit poor. Okay. <laughs> how, how it is different from normal CAT6 or fiber cabling of your solution while integrating data, voice and video? Okay, okay. Um, so it is about fiber cabling and integrating voice and video. Okay, for um, so what could be different? Uh, so um, first of all, we are, we are talking about about the factory. Yeah. So that means if it comes to fiber optic, um, we are using let's say normal standards like single mode, multi mode uh, that uh, things that we know from uh, normal. Uh, transmission of on fiber optic but um, so the difference in in the cables and uh, if we want to use it in the factory means we have mainly the more mechanical properties that are that are different that means uh, we need to have them for the right temperatures or mechanical stress or maybe in the track chain or, or whatever so this um, since we are not so much using audio and video in the factories you know um, that's uh, something that is not a typical data. So we have more the uh, real-time data that is transmitted here. That means also control data uh, or data from sensors and actuators that we are using. Um, so I think it's mainly um, what we are talking about: mechanical and um, uh, and um, yeah, uh, also uh, environmental properties that are maybe different. Does that answer the question? yes i think so okay uh, what are the value additions uh, we are going to get with your factory network solution uh, please repeat what are the value additions we are going to get with your factory network solution okay so the value that we are offering is um first of all we are offering a complete solution that it's one of uh, obvious of one of our targets that means um, we are really looking at the applications of our customers and um, we have a very deep application knowledge and therefore we can really build um, a complete solutions there. always end-to-end -end solution that means you have one partner that you can talk to if you want to build up your industrial communication solution and uh, we think this is a very important asset because we still see a lot of customers um, um, let's say uh, are facing a big challenge um, if it comes to industrial communication normally uh, a machine builder is uh, experienced with building a machine uh, automating the process but he's maybe not that old, uh, industrial communication expert. And this is where um, LAP comes in place and where we want to support and help our customers to build uh, that network. And we can offer really this complete solution. That means uh, we are not just talking with you about the cable. We also have no problem talking about the switch or talking about the um, a connector that is needed yeah and so th this is how our portfolios build up and this uh, gives us the opportunity at the end to uh, also have a really reliable complete solution which is also tested together with all the components that we are offering and um so uh, also i think what is um, one of our benefits and um uh, also our mindset that we are following uh, is ease of use um which which was also an example a short example that i've showed you with that fast connect solution yeah that means we want to make it very easy for our customers uh, to save time and uh, do the installation very quick and easy yeah? and therefore we are offering the right tools uh, a cable that is specially designed to that you can install and handle it very uh, nice and, and easy and connectors that uh, are very good fitting to that cables yeah so this uh, so we can in a nutshell we can save you a lot of time and uh, a lot of uh, stress <laughs> so in short you are offering the complete uh, solution package uh, as value additions right yeah right yeah okay okay
fine the next question is from mr amit kolge uh, how easy uh, it is to replace the existing ethernet network with a single pair ethernet cable mm -hmm. so yeah good question and um so first of all for sure uh, you need um to install a new network if it shall work with single pay Ethernet. So you have new cables, uh, you have new connectors, and you have new active um, network components. But um, if you have an existing factory, for sure, I will not recommend that you change your existing, let's say, CAT6 four pair cables against a, a single pair Ethernet cable. That makes no sense because you already have an installation, a powerful installation, uh, which is working. So why shall you change it? Yeah. So, but um, if you now want to enhance your factory, your installation, that means you are want to integrate some new components and maybe a smart sensor with, with a single pay Ethernet interface. Then there's a very simple migration path. Uh, you, we, we see that in future we will have switches that have multiple interfaces. That means we will have switches that have um, that act like a media converter that have a normal RJ45 interface to connect to the network and have also single pay Ethernet ports to connect to the single pay Ethernet uh, devices. Yeah. And uh, this would be a, a simple migration path, uh, just use a, 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 thing, a switch with RG45 and normal Ethernet net uh, interface, including uh, single pay Ethernet ports. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer the question? Yes, yes, I think so. I think so. Next question is uh, from uh, Kirti Kumar N. Uh, need more information on predictive maintenance box which you explained just now yes you're welcome um so i would uh, recommend um that first of all leave your uh, address details and uh to to the colleagues and um so they directly can connect you uh from our lab india subsidiary so um we have them also in the line and uh i think um Maybe Julie, you can say how we collect the um, the address details later. Okay, sure. Uh, I think that's covered. That that's okay. ensured that we collect uh, and mm -hmm. and connect to you. Yeah. Right. Correct. We will connect with them. Uh, next question is from Hitesh Nikam. Uh, what is AS interface? Okay. AS interface is also a simple. Um, communication solution uh, which was specially made for actuators and sensor this is where the name comes from as interface it's i think it was launched to the market about 20 years ago or, so, or more maybe 25 and uh, it has a very low data rate and is an own uh, standard so it is no not ethernet compatible and uh, it is just usable for simple sensors uh, with just a few bits. And uh, but uh, the, the very special thing with AS interface is the nice uh, installation technology. It uses so-called piercing technology. That means uh, if you want to connect a sensor or connector to that cable, you don't need to strip the cable. You just uh, pierce. The contacts in the cables through the outer sheet and so it goes very quick to install it so this is the big benefit of the of the as interface and um but uh, let's say that the weak point is that it is not using a standard like uh, ethernet yeah okay uh again next question is from sopnil shashikan kulkarni uh, with the market flooded with products in iiot how does lab specify its usp to a mid-sized customer, what are the measures for quality control to ensure durability coupled with the performance? Okay, it was a long question. Um, so could you could you please repeat uh, yeah. in short? Uh, yeah, with the market flooded with products in IIoT, mm -hmm. how does LAP specify its USP to a mid-sized customer? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah, um, market is flooded. Yes, you're right. Uh, there are a lot of uh, competitors on the market. And uh, so maybe um, what, is, what is our USP and our differentiation here? Yeah? So first of all, um, uh, I explained a little bit before already. So first of all, we want to be really that um, application expert. That means we really dive in deep in the applications and know what the customers on the plant floor needed. So on the market, if you look at the competitors, our, uh, our competitors and uh, let's say other market participants, um, what who they are. Um, so first of all, we have uh, in the IoT segment, uh, we have competitors like coming from the IT um, segment. Yeah, that means uh, competitors that make uh, Ethernet, standard Ethernet cables, or that make Wi-Fi uh, access points, or uh, that make, I don't know, any other uh, IoT devices yeah, that, that are coming now. Also 5G is a, a nice example, uh, which is uh, driven by the telecommunication industry. Yeah? So they have one thing in common, uh, they have no clue about factory applications. So that means um, there our benefit against these competitors is really that we know what we are talking about and uh, we know the application and what are the requirements. So that means we can really make our products and our systems uh, in that case really application um, suitable uh, that at the end you reach uh, ease of use in the application. Yeah. And uh, now looking at competitors for sure that are also offering, let's say, Let's have a look at um, control system manufacturers like Siemens or Rockwell. Yeah? So they are also my, uh, offering uh, communication solutions like we do. Yeah? And uh, we think uh, if it comes to, for example, like a control system manufacturer like Siemens, you know, they are offering Profinet, yeah? but they are offering also nothing else but Profinet. So now it happens that our customers often ask us, okay, today I uh, have to design a machine with a Siemens control system inside, okay, then Profinet is perfect. Tomorrow, maybe you have to offer a machine uh, that has uh, a Rockwell PLC inside. And uh, what happens then? Yeah, you change the network, then the name of the network is Ethernet IP. And maybe now uh, that machine builder has no clue um, how, how Ethernet IP works and what are the, the suitable components and everything. Now they have to talk to Rockwell. Yeah? And so we can offer that we are communication system neutral. We are no control system manufacturer. We are offering the network and there we are the ex expert. Yeah? That means our customers can come to us and independent if the name of their control system is Siemens or is Rockwell or is Beckhoff or whoever, yeah? they always can stay with us if we are talking about the communication system and we are offering a communication system that is suitable for all of the um, industrial communication systems on the market. So that's what you have seen on that slide that I've shown. Uh, we are supporting all these communication systems. So you see there are a lot of competitors on the market for sure. And it's always depending on uh, what competitor we are looking at. And it's always different about our advantages that we are offering uh, against this other uh, this, this, these competitors on the market. But uh, this was just a short example. Um, I think also we are offering a much broader range of if it comes to cable, because this is our DNA. This is where, where we are coming from. And uh, so I would not uh, buy a cable from Siemens. Why should I do this? Because uh, LAP has a much broader range for, for Profinet cables for every specific um, application that, that you can imagine. Yeah, we have for food and beverage, we have for robots, we have for wind turbines, every application that you can imagine. So we are real expert in this, yeah. Okay. So does that answer the question? <laughs> Little bit advertisement. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. So you have, we have solutions for every application, that's the USB. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question is from Anjan Acharya Ganguly. Uh, in retrofitting job, significant cost is to be considered uh, at customer's end. So how do you advise ROI to your customer? Uh, please repeat again. <laughs> yeah, in, in the retrofitting, in the retrofitting yes. job, 
significant cost is to be considered at customer's end. So how do you advise a uh, return on investment to your customer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, retro, yeah, understand retrofitting is the, is the question and um, how can, what do we advise? Um, retrofitting, um, I think this is very normal. Uh, there's, uh, most of the uh, customers and installations that we see today are brownfield installation, not always a complete new uh, installation is done. So retrofitting um, depends on what you want to do. Let's assume um, uh, you have a you have a very old factory, uh, no network installed, and now you want to have this make want to make this factory smart. Yeah. First of all, is you first of all you need a network. Yeah. And then you are maybe challenged uh, to get the data out of the PLC. Yeah. So all the things uh, are challenging that 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 you are facing. So that means uh, you cannot change maybe the complete factory and you cannot change also the all the PLCs because there's maybe a program inside that you don't know anymore. So sometimes we see that it makes sense also to use that um, such applications like single pair Ethernet um, to um, and also IoT is a is a good choice um, or a good opportunity for retrofitting because if you add IoT. That means, for example, a, a smart sensor with with their own communication, which does not need um, the communication with the PLC, yeah, because the PLC is there already. The program is maybe twenty years old. You don't have the documentation anymore, and uh, you don't know how to change anything in the PLC and and get the data out of it. So it sometimes makes sense in this case to just build some new things around that uh, existing applications. That means um, IoT offers this opportunity. I um, put some more sensors in the process to get some temperature, some pressure out of here and get some more data. Yeah, And then you build the, the own network for this. And um, so without caring about what happens in the PLC. Um, is, is one thing that we see that is happening. We, we also did a retrofit here in Stuttgart of our own plant, a cable manufacturer, old cable manufacturing, was, was the first cable manufacturing of LAP. Uh, so it's quite old, with quite old machines. And uh, that the biggest challenge uh, was when we implemented the MAS system, manufacturing execution systems, to, to get the data out of the, out of the machine. Yeah? And for this, you usually need need experts for integration uh, for uh, for for that software um, uh, programming in the PLC and all that stuff. So let's say that's that's not our core business. So our core business is more to to provide that network. To we build that network up to the machine, and then you need further integration expert that. Uh, get that legacy data out of, of out of the machine to do that programming in the PLC. And uh, for sure, also, it's helpful if you have your own experts that um, are still knowing about that uh, software that it's inside. But retrofitting is always a big challenge here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks. Thanks for the detailed explanation. Uh, next question is from Praveen Kumar. Uh, do you have communication system which supports all the ports available? Again, please. Do you have communication system which supports all the ports available? All which supports all the ports available. All the ports available. I'm not sure by, what is meant with all the ports. Uh, ports means in this case protocol ports in in a firewall or something like this. Uh, I think so. The connecting ports communication system with all the ports available. Um, it's a uh, multi, multi function devices. Multi whether it, yeah, whether it supports the multi function devices. Okay. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm I try to, uh, as I understand it, um, try to answer like this, what could be a multi function device? Um, um, so what we see at the moment is um, that our new devices are coming up with the um, integration of uh, industrial Ethernet and also single pair Ethernet 
um, what the, um, for example, a sensor, uh, which could be a multi-function device. Um, you know, in the past, the sensor was like, um, uh, it is a temperature sensor, and this can only deliver one value, which is temperature. Therefore, uh, analog value could be enough, 15 bit, and this describes uh, uh, at the end um, the value of the temperature. Yeah? But now we see sensors, smart sensors that are coming up that have multiple um, physical measurements. For example, that sensor can measure the temperature and also can measure maybe the pressure and also can measure maybe, I don't know, um, some vibration or whatever. Yeah. So, um, and this means you have now multiple functions integrated in one device. And uh, in the past, this was not possible to get this uh, multiple informations out of that one sensor because you have maybe one cable that is connected to that sensor. You could connect maybe multiple cores to that uh, sensor, which could be a solution. But uh, with Ethernet, it's much more easy. Now with single pair Ethernet, we have just two cores that we have to connect. And this simple sensors can offer multiple service services to us. Yeah, that's a big benefit now with uh, changing from existing systems like IO link or AS interface or analog signals to single pay Ethernet because now we have uh, much more bandwidth and we have uh, the sensor gets simpler IP address to the network and now you can access all the informations that the sensor can offer via the network and now that all many sensor manufacturers are uh, thinking about this at the moment what they can do with much smarter sensors they call it i think multi-physics sensors yeah and sure, sure multi-function devices uh, as i um, interpret your question is uh, could be also uh, for sure a plc or any smart device which has uh, multiple function integrated. And that's always helpful um, then if you have uh, Ethernet network where you can access this uh, multiple functions and uh, communicate them, yeah? which is often not possible with a, with a old field bus. Multifunction, a camera, for example, yeah? that can deliver pictures uh, or also can maybe um, have, a, have a smart, have some intelligence inside and pre-process uh, a picture and uh, so now you can access both yeah we have for example smart rfid readers now um, that are based on a camera that, that um, can offer many things to you that first of all it offers just the information that's coming from the rfid tag that is read or, or now it's not RFID, sorry, it's QR code, yeah, about the barcode or QR code is read. And now you can also offer uh, access for maintenance reason, this reader and see the camera picture via the same network, because we maybe want to see if, if the adjustment of the sensor is still right, and therefore you want to see the real picture, which was not possible in the past with a Profibus network, yeah, and the Profibus this sensor just uh, gave you the data of the of the of the code that it was read by by the sensor. Yeah, and now you have multi uh, multiple choices or multiple functions that you can access. There, you can do a diagnosis. You can do configuration of the sensor via the same network. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Ralph. It was a pleasure having you and thanks for your detailed explanation to each of the answers. So thank you very much again and, and uh, over to you, Joely. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rao. Thank you, Mr. Jitkar. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be now moving on to the next presentation, which is on enabling technology for smart factories by Mr. Nitin Kalotia, advisor Kaizen Hensai LLP and partner at Petona Advisory. Mr. Nitin Kalotia has 18 plus years of industry experience in the fields of business transformation, operations and supply chain consulting. He has particular expertise in operation and supply chain performance enhancement for business growth and the experience of having evaluated over 150 manufacturing sites in over 14 different countries and 18 major sectors. So, Mr. Nitin, over to you. Thank you, Julie. Just wanted to quick check uh, on how much time do I have because it was scheduled to be wrapping up at 5.05. .05.
So how much time do you think I could take on this uh, session? So uh, 10 minutes should be good, 10 to 15 minutes at the max. Yes, 15 minutes would be okay. And that Perfect. will be followed by maybe five minutes of Q&A. Sure, sure. I'll try and keep it very precise and probably just focus on a couple of the elements and at least ensure that the people go back uh, as planned and you know, they, I'm sure they have their evening plans for the day. Okay, so good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on you know enabling technologies for smart factories. What I basically wanted to do today was talk about some of the digital themes. Now, so we have been talking about technologies, right? So, and there was a detailed session that we just had uh, a while back in terms of trying to understand what are the different kind of technologies and you know how it is really enabling what's happening and all. But let's also understand what's happening in the manufacturing space. So, Ralph spoke a lot about you know how lab is enabling it. I, from a very consulting background and from a consulting perspective. Maybe I'll just cover two parts of it. One, what are the evolving or emerging digital themes, how it is really impacting manufacturing and how manufacturing companies are leveraging that. And maybe also talk a bit more about in terms of why integration, communication and automation becomes a very, very important part of uh, not uh, the digital transformation journeys and some of the key, I would say, pitfalls that companies come across. Uh, when they look at this particular part of, you know, the transformation journey and what you could really look at avoiding. So having said that, you know, uh, every company is going is, you know, very, I would say, upbeat about saying that, yes, we want to be a smart factory. We want to get onto the journey of smart factories. Uh, we would at some point of time, you know, uh, enable, start using technology to start becoming more and more, I would say, product, uh, you know, efficient, more competitive. So that's happening. But when we release a smart factory, what does it really mean? I know what is the journey uh, like for most companies today? Or what is the journey that we typically believe companies should follow? So as you see on the top, you know, the basically the digital maturity moves from what we call as a disconnected factories, which are traditional factories, moving on to what we is the very first step is the integration. And I think Ralph spoke a lot about how the technologies from lab is enabling integration and you know the products made by them help them. So basically, integration is a stage where we start acquiring data from our machines from our IT applications and start becoming more and more visible in terms of our performance, right? So that is the first level of integration, the integration and visibility that comes. The next level of maturity typically for companies is, okay, saying that, okay, now I know what's happening in the factory, the data are coming in, there's a lot of communication happening. How do I automate our processes? Now, when I meant automation of processes, we're not talking about the software, uh, I would say manufacturing processes, we typically referring to what we call as a business processes. So let's say, how does a communication and integration between, let's say a manufacturing function, a quality function, a maintenance function, a warehouse function. So basically all the functions of the shop floor. So how does one know what production order is to be done? For that production order, what material is required? If there's a breakdown of the machine, how does the maintenance guy automatically knows that there's a breakdown? So basically do an entire integration and you know automation of your business processes and that's where the tools like an MES uh, becomes very very relevant a lot of companies have started using MES as a tool companies are also using IoT as a way of integration but MES becomes more prominent if the objective is of process digitalization or process uh, uh, I would say automation the next level is now I have the information my processes are automated what do I do next so the focus is how do I become more and more intelligent as an organization and this is the place where we're talking about using a lot of advanced analytics tools. We are using AI ML based solutions primarily to predict what will happen. So basically saying that, okay, I'm running a process. Will this process give me a product which will comply to my quality standards? Can I you know, predict it? And if I'm able to predict, can I also tell what needs to be done as a correction in the process so that I'm able to do a course correction even before it generated defective product, right? So that there's the stage of intelligence that is getting, you know, companies are focusing on. And then the last level of maturity is the autonomous or you've also heard of a, a tool or, you know, or a concept which is called a lights out factory. Now it's not a concept actually, there are lights out factories in the country. The way the name means that these are self-reliant, self-managed, and I would say, you know, uh, independent autonomous factories where the data is coming automatically. Uh, uh, I would say analysis is happening. Corrections or self corrections are happening. And then you have a product which is coming out, right? So this is how companies typically move from a disconnected to an autonomous uh, process. 
Now, if you look at in each of these stages, the data is something which is very important. The accuracy of data is very important. The reliability of the data that is coming is very important. So let's say I'm running a program or I'm running a manufacturing line where I have, I'm predicting the quality of, let's say, the biscuits which are getting manufactured. In my life, right? And then I find that, you know, the data which is coming right from my machine layer and from my uh, instruments are not right. There is, you know, lag in the data which is coming or there's a destruction in the data. So the entire program fails. And that is where, you know, this becomes the automation layer or the integration layer becomes very, very important. Right? So this is how the typically companies move from the journey part of it. What are they really trying to achieve? So when we say, okay, I'm moving from a, a traditional manufacturing organization to a smart factory organization. So how would you really define it, right? What are the key characteristics? So we typically find that these companies are more flexible to responding to customer demands, right? Because it's more predictable, it's more reliable, right? I'm more efficient because I'm able to identify or I'm able to manage my processes in a way which are more uh, I would say, which are giving results which are much more efficient. So the factory itself is more efficient, right? These factories are more reliable. Why? Because I am able to consistently deliver what is required using technology. So as I said, predictability is an important characteristics of a smart factory. And then over a period of time, they start becoming more and more resilient, right? So this is how some of the key characteristics that you would see in a smart or in a digital factory. Now, this is something I'm sure a lot of people uh, on this webinar would know about it. But what we've also seen is that when you look at manufacturing setups, right, uh, shop floor automation from a perspective of robots and all has been a thing of past. ERP for the kind of value that it brought and the integration that it brought at an enterprise level, again, has been something that companies have been using in the past. So when it comes to now the next wave of digital transformation, industry 4.0, what are companies trying to do and how are they taking it up? So there's some very important themes that are coming in. So I'll just talk about those themes and maybe cover some of them in a little more detail in the next slide. So digital safety. So how do I utilize technology today to deliver more and more or make my shop floor operations on a factory more safe? And simple example would be saying that if an operator is working on the shop floor and is not wearing a helmet, can I predict that and raise an alarm saying that there's somebody who's not following the uh, uh, safety practice? So there are a lot of things happening in terms of PPE compliance, access to hazardous place. So let's say a company looked at an area which is uh, 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 hazardous waste storage, only certain people who have an access can go in. I have got my cameras using the vision system. If somebody else tries to open an area, I get an alarm saying that somebody unauthorized is trying to get it. So a lot of things are happening. Digital worker, a very interesting theme, uh, which is really evolving and evolving much faster than a lot of other themes. Why? What's happening is in a lot of industries. Now, I have an operator. The time that it requires to skill an operator, the time that it requires to now, uh, uh, now bring them to a level where the efficiency, productivity levels are very high. And then the challenge of retaining them in today's world, right? So what are we trying to do is saying that, can I enable this operator with all the tools and technologies in a way that one, the time to skill, uh, scaling is reduced. Second, I can also work with people who do not require a very high level of uh, uh, no, uh, skill levels. Third uh, is like, you know, so basically saying that if I'm doing an assembly of a product, I'm in an engineering company, every order is a new order. Now the guy needs an access to MBOB. He requires an access to work instructions. He needs to be guided how the assembly needs to be done. Now imagine all that is available to him at a click of a button. On his screen, he comes, he says, this is the work order. He clicks on it and he can see, okay, this is the M bomb. This is the material bomb that I'm supposed to use. Okay, this is the assembly instruction that I'm supposed to follow. This is the quality inspection that I'm supposed to do, right? And then if he wants to go and refer, he's got an access to the videos that will tell him how to do. Even people are going a step ahead and saying that, okay, fine, let's look at, uh, uh, let's look at, you know, AR, VR, which can support him in terms of even guiding the actual operations in the shop, right? So this is where companies are really identifying and finding the benefits of, uh, you know, the, or, uh, this uh, theme of digital worker. And a lot of work is happening. A lot of companies who are in the space of IoT are actually having apps and solutions around this, which is becoming very interesting. Uh, okay, I'll just cover two more in the want of time. Intelligent process. So what's happening is today people are saying, okay, what's now with you know, technologies being available, being more reliable, right? Data acquisition is not a challenge. We can acquire data. 
Having acquired data, I can create data leaks as required. On top of it, I can build an analytics layer. So what I can do is I can understand how the trends are happening on a real time basis. Then I can go to the next level of analytics, which is more predictive. So saying that, okay, if this is how my process is working on a real time basis, using the historical and the live stream of data, this is how I predict the process to perform as I go along. Right. So let's take an example of uh, a company that makes uh, a continuous process plant. So let's say a paper manufacturing plant. Right. So now I'm making pen, uh, paper, which has got like, you know, at least 40, 50 stages of manufacturing, right, from a pulp to the final product. Right. And there's so many process parameters, so many controls, so many checks. How do I predict that the paper which is coming out is actually going to be the right quality paper with the right moisture content, right gloss, right thickness and things like that. So can I predict that? And that is what exactly companies are doing today, right? So that's the prediction part of it. Now, they're even not stopping here, saying that from the prediction, can I go ahead and also prescribe what I should do as changes in the process, right? So that I am able to correct that even before a defective product is uh, getting manufactured, right? So there's a lot of intelligence that is coming into the process and that's where the concept of intelligent process and I would say even combined to the same theory is the predictable quality, which is becoming very, very, uh, uh, relevant today in the in the today's context. The last one that I want to cover right now is the integrated planning and schedule. Right. So we have a demand, market demand. We have a manufacturing, and then we have a supply. Right. And for any company which is in a B two C kind of a segment, a 60, 65 percent, uh, a max 70 percent, you know, forecast uh, to you know the actual orders. If your forecast accuracy is about 70 percent, it's like amazing. Now imagine if you have got a supply chain or a demand focused at 70% accuracy. You've got a manufacturing setup that works at 80-85% uh, efficiencies. All right. And then you've got a distribution network, which is again working at about 70-80% kind of uh, efficiency. Now imagine the kind of slackness that we have in the system. So today what companies are doing is, can I have my planning software and my scheduling software and my execution software? So let's say NMEs is my execution layer. A planning is my, you know, an APO that I'm using for SAP APO that I'm using for. Can these two talk on a seamless basis as to what was the plan for production? What did actually happen? What was the demand on the market for today's? What did the actually uh, market, uh, you know, offtake happen? And then optimize it on a more real time basis kind of it, right? And that is where people are saying that, okay, even a three to 5% improvement in this area, I mean, even three to 5% is very high, even a half a percent to 1% improvement in the entire value chain is few crores for a you know or for mid size kind of companies and that is where people are not talking about integrating even the planning softwares to execution layer softwares and even to a certain extent if i go down to the supply chain softwares kind of area so these are the kind of things which is happening from an integrated planning and uh, uh, communication perspective or the scheduling perspective so there are other themes also which are coming in for example collaborative design and product uh, development smart product and services connected and transparent value chain but i think since we are running out of time i'm just gonna take a quick uh, 30 seconds and just so i just wanted to cover this in detail but i'm gonna skip this yeah i'm just talk, talking about why automation and integration becomes very very relevant i'm sorry i'm gonna go a little fast because of the want of time but i'll just cover this and probably stop uh, for any question now what happens is when the companies goes on a digital transformation journey, right? So what you would see is typically, this is the ISA 95 framework, which is right from you know, the automation maturity of an organization or digital maturity. So basically the entire selling happens. Company says, oh, I want to implement, I want to implement an MES or I want to implement a PLM on an ERP. So the discussion is that. So those are vendors which are expert in deploying these. Right? When you come to the layer below, which is a PLC, SCADA, OPC, uh, OPC layer, or you further go down to you know, the sensors and you know, you know, all your uh, the lower level of the equipment and the sensors part of it, you've got different players who've got different uh, you know, who operate in this space. So what is very important is you know, at the selling time, the entire focus is on the software or you know, which is like an you know, MES, MOM or you know, IoT, what we're looking at. The entire focus on what is our readiness from a shop floor automation perspective from my equipment ability to uh, what to say communicate data my uh, instruments to be upgraded to be able to transfer data in a real time those are considerations that are just not there right this typically starts after you know we've decided we've got a vendor and things like that now at times what also happens is the readiness at the l1 and l2 level if it is not significant, then the cost of retrofitting, there was a question also somebody asked, uh, how do I look at the ROI of a retrofitting, right? The cost that is involved in the retrofitting, 
right? The, the timeline that is required for retrofitting, the kind of skill that is required for retrofitting or even for the upgradation, you know, that can actually could kill the entire project. So the point I'm trying to drive is that, you know, when we're looking at our digital transformation journey, while the focus, which is very rightly at saying that, you know, uh, what kind of solutions I want, what is the problem I'm trying to solve and get the right vendors, taking into consideration your L1, L2 maturity, readiness, the cost, the timeline, and building it as an integral part of your journey is also very, very important uh, to ensure that, you know, your projects are not, uh, you know, uh, I would say, becoming infeasible at some point in time just because you realize oh, the entire project cost has gone up by 30 percent or the timelines have gone up by another 40 50 percent and things like that right so i think i'll take a quick pause and stop here in fact i'll just stop here it's been about 15 minutes and uh, i hope i've been at least able to communicate the thought process and we'll be happy to take questions from you Thank you, Mr. Uttan, for that very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, it was the part where you spoke about the different digital themes, you know, the digital safety and the digital workers and why automation and integration have become very important. So those were some very informative uh, parts, I would say. So we will uh, we will have the question answers now. I would like to ask Mr. Jitka to please take over and uh, ask Mr. Nitin any questions that we have from our audience. Yes. Thanks, Nitin. It was indeed a really uh, short, crisp, but very uh, uh, informative and to the point presentation. I'm sure the audience uh, must have got the message to what you are trying to convey. And it is very, very important to understand at a macro level or before starting any process of uh, digitization to understand uh, what are the trends and uh, what is in it for me. Like what exactly the uh, uh, I am going to do with this and ensuring the ROI on that and the, uh, the time frame uh, with which everyone has to calculate before going on to any digitization activity. Mm -hmm. So uh, my, my question is like uh, more or less now, uh, most of the factories or most of the uh, business uh, enterprises, they are automated, more or less the automation is there. So now the next step is digitization. So there is always a question that uh, if, if my uh, factories, uh, some parts like uh, in case of SMEs, especially there are some parts automated, not the entire process or the entire uh, right. value chain is automated. So in that case, how can this uh, digitization uh, roadmap works? Like when, once you have some part of uh, my operations automated and then I have to digitize those parts only and not the entire value chain. But is it possible to ensure that kind of uh, ROI and time frame or the, the investment cost with just that kind of operation or you have to really think about the entire value chain and then, then look for the uh, uh, future uh, ROI for them. So a very uh, relevant and a pertinent question here, Shekhar. So if you really look at the entire world is actually moving on towards what they call as a point solution concept, right? And so what's happening is people are saying, okay, I don't want to take up the entire factory transformation at a time. I want to take up one area so let's say predictive maintenance. So I just want to look at that area, build solutions around that, get the benefit out of it, right? And that is where the entire world is now moving on. Let's say focus on saying that I want to have a real time information uh, on my performance across the factory. And that's the only thing that I want to do. Now there, it could be saying that, okay, there are certain areas of the plant where I have the, uh, you know, the automation and the integration layer available or can be retrofitted with a small cost. And then I can do that. There could be certain companies who are saying that, okay, it's just not there. So in that case, what we say, okay, look at areas of the plant, which are significant and important for you and only invest in that because if you do an investment across the plant, you will not be able to justify the ROI. And that's how the prioritization happens. Correct, correct. And, but while in, especially in case of SMEs, because we have been doing this kind of events uh, since uh, last so many years, especially last one and a half years, all the virtual events, mm -hmm. there has been always the questions from SME, uh, their point of view, that currently their investment, uh, they, they, they are like a, uh, into the cash current situation where they, they can't really look at uh, very huge investments in transforming or uh, having the digital transformation in their factories or in their businesses. So what would be the solution to look at uh, the, uh, to entire to ensure the balance between the okay. cost or where the investments will come from and the benefits which you are getting from the digital transformation? So Shikhar, I think the approach that companies have to take and uh, something that I also wanted to talk in detail today, but okay. So the approach that people have to take that 
technology has to be used as an enabler to solve a business problem rather than saying that what can this technology do for me see this is where a lot of companies if i were to just tell you seven out of 10 pilot projects don't scale up in across the globe today true, true. Only because they're not able to justify the rois and things like that because i came as a technology guy i said i you know this technology can do this 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 okay let's try it out i think the approach has to be a little different approach is to say ki, boss, i have got these three business problems now which technology can solve it and if a technology is being applied to a business problem it is very rare that we will not be able to come up with a business case or an ROI for it. And that is where, you know, my submission is that it has to be looked at from the other side of the table, not from the technology side of the table. Okay, correct. Fine. Uh, I think I think we, we, we should stop here as it's already, uh, we have got the time. So thanks, Nitin. It was indeed a pleasure having you in uh, today's uh, sessions. Okay, good. And, thanks, and, for and thanks, thanks for your, uh, again, uh, sharing your very short and crisp presentation, but to the point, which which I'm sure uh, people will have some value along with them while, while they uh, leave this event. So thanks. Thanks, Nitin, again. Thank you so much. Over to you, Zoeli. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Nitin. Thank you, Mr. Jitkar. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we uh, we will now be coming um, uh, we will now be coming to a close of our webinar. So, we I think we all learned something very useful and very informative from both our presenters. You know, from the fact that the measures to reach zero downtime of the network, and like Mr. Nitin just said, that technology has to be used as an enabler, and also that the importance and challenges of integration and communication. So, these are some several factors, including many more that we learned from today's presenters. So thank you very much. And I'm sure it will be very useful for our audience to apply in their organizations and in their, in their companies. So uh, we'll now be coming to a close. And uh, also the winners of today's lucky draw, who stayed till the end of the webinar, will be receiving an email from the published industry in regards to your prize. So wait for our email. And before we close, I would like to thank our wonderful audience for being a part of today's sessions. And I would also like to thank our reward presenters and the lab team, including Ms. Shreya Chaudhary and uh, Mr. Saurav Jain. So thank you all very much, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.